you're telling your friends about um, it. But when you're not telling your friends about it, it's uh, totally not how it works. Who sent Machete and Hermeson into loser's bracket? Oh, I'm looking that up right now. I'm wondering the same. What if I can look it up faster than you? I bet you can't. I'm tapping the link multiple times. Doesn't that make it load faster? Yeah, that absolutely does. Uh, it was Boomy and Sandstorm Dang who it. sent Machete and Hermeson, who also sent Agzo and Viper. Um, the I technically saw it first, but you were just talking over No, uh-uh. Yeah. Uh -uh. You're so loud, Sparky. Boomy and Sandstorm 3 0'd Machete and Hermeson, but they 3 1 Agzo and Viper. So Agzo and Viper took a game off of Boomy and Sandstorm, something that Machete and Hermeson could not do. Oh, As of today. Yeah, yeah. But if we're talking about comparisons. Sure, yeah. Agzo and Viper were a better match for Boomy and Sandstorm than Machete and Hermeson. That's the only direct comparison, or I guess indirect comparison, yeah, that we can make until we see this. Oh, uh, Viper needs to stop looking at the end of the camera like that. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. He keeps looking. And then he it's pokes intense. Agzo. Oh, there he is. It is intense. Sometimes he does the eyebrow thing. I don't know what you call that. It's like the wave with eyebrows. Because he can. He can raise. He can both do. Yeah, eyebrows. he can do. Who are we talking about? Viper. No, but who? I think we were talking about that with Duke in Dallas. Yeah, that's what we were about talking about. People who can raise both eyebrows. I can only raise one. I can only raise one. I think yeah. normal. No. Normal humans can Normal only. Humans? It's only the weirdos so you, that can do both. Oh, the weirdo. Which is like Duke, like, like and Duke and Duke and Viper. There and Viper. Yeah, there you go. Because I mean, look at Viper. He's a Viking, but he doesn't play Bodvar. Total weirdo. That's true. That's messed up. He could even play Thor. That's his people. Passive. Yeah. That's his people. Thor, Thor is not a Viking, but he has a beard. If you have a beard, are you a Viking? Basically. Are you a Viking? Spider? I don't know what makes uh, some, someone or something a Viking or not. I don't think anything. I don't, I don't think they exist anymore. Well, they, I they mean, they don't exist. Yeah, I was going to say, like, no, they were definitely real. <laughs> like Vikings. They were very Vikings. much real. Vikings are much like Santa Claus. They definitely just. Oh, oh what? Vikings are very much like Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? Existence. But no, Vikings were real. <laughs> I was making a joke. <laughs> Sparky, that's what. Look, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to insult any Vikings out there. I'm on, I'm on your I side. I mean, obviously he's real because Bodvar, right? Bodvar exists. <laughs> so Vikings. Obviously, Vikings are real because Bodvar. Why do you keep putting me down to this, Sparky? Because I'm not going to be on the wrong side of history with this one, bud. Okay. All right. I know, I know a, a, a Viking who's related to Leif Erikson. Really? Yeah. He's a very dear family friend. That's actually amazing. Yeah. Well, I take back what I said. You should. I'm glad because you're. You could have also interpreted that as Santa Claus is real. So. But see, we know that he's not. <laughs> Do we? we sometimes do. Uh, our Hollow community can sometimes be very young. I know, Daiku was talking so I hope to I'm me. not spoiling it for any of our younger viewers out there, or even our older viewers. I don't know. Daiku was talking to me about how they're serving reindeer here and some of the things that you can eat. So that is like directly related to Santa <laughs> That's that's true. Because <laughs> reindeer are a thing. They're absolutely they're real. Actually exist. They are a very real animal. And they're in stories related. Yeah. To Santa Claus. So thus, Vikings also must exist. But. I, Yep, that is that is the uh, Loser step by step uh, logic proof. Yes. I think I think I learned that proof in in, in one of my <laughs> <The> jump <geometry. laughs> in one of my classes. I think <laughs> I think that so was sophomore year in high school. That's Modus Tollens, right? Oh uh, yeah. I think so. Right. We're still waiting on this match to go. There's a uh, Okay, I I've ran into Hermeson in the bathroom a couple times and he was washing off a bottle. <laughs> was it the same bathroom that Dobrain got locked in earlier? <laughs> no, on today? I don't know how he got locked in a bathroom. I think there is a separate, like, single-person bathroom that he somehow and just got stuck in. Interesting. Did you, uh, anyway. I still don't know how that so happened. So it wasn't there. But so that you, was actually... Did you so see his tweet? I did not see his tweet. He tweeted, like, I'm, I'm stuck in the bathroom. What's up? What's going on? Did, did I have, like, a selfie? A bathroom <laughs> yeah, selfie? <laughs> it did. It was so funny. <laughs> I actually, I think they're going hilarious. In. So game number one, Agzo and Viper versus Machete and Hermeson. Agzo and Viper pro most likely projected to win, but we're going to see anything can happen as they got... Ragnar and Fate versus Koji and Thor. So much Thor and Fate representation throughout DreamHack Summer. And they're fighting their way into Loser Top 3. As that downstick connects and Agzo gets the recovery under Hermeson. Is that going to be it? For Where's the, the okay, no. right, okay. He knew he was dead. That's why the weapon toss didn't come out. Right. He caught him in like the middle of his recovery yeah, before he was able back to the stage. Yeah. Normally, I would say shame on you for not throwing your weapon down. But he knew that was a guaranteed kill. And he was holding on to his weapon in case Machete tried to go over so he could capitalize on that without having to fight into that unarmed. A little sidelight weapon toss from Machete and the ground pound. Oh, I liked how you positioned that ground pound. It, it's really nice when players, even though he like ended up losing the stock, 
And with the patience to do like a full jump without fast falling and then ground pounding, because mm -hmm. it's kind of like they're waiting to see what you're going to do, but they also have to recover at the same time. Could work really well. But Agzo and Viper still ahead. Six stocks to four. And they're putting on damage slowly. Which I think is the side light stair. That will definitely do it, especially on the platform of Man of the Fortress all the way to the right. Guess that stock of a Viper. Agzo shortly follows afterwards, and we're back to an even game for the number for the first game of this best of five. So for Hermison and Machete, the biggest thing I worry about is Machete's kill potential onto Agzo. Because I don't remember so far from the couple times we've seen Machete today that he's been that effective with signatures. And aside from that, like it's going to take a lot of sidelight sayers on Orb to kill Thor on this stage. Maybe on Brawlhaven it might not take as many, but on this stage it's going to take quite a lot. So he's going to have to be effective with those signatures or kind of rely on Hermison. Because even off stage, if Agzo has Hammer or even the Gravity Cancel Neutral Sig on Orb, he has significant recovery options. Hermison has done a great job so far of killing Agzo. I think he killed Agzo both times. Right. So he's been effective with the signatures. Of course, Ragnar's signature kit, fantastic for both weapons. Oh man, blue team. Surprisingly in the lead, but just now being taken off the top there. Can he get Hermerson as well? Hermerson's been doing such a great job. Like having Hermerson's been one of those players throughout all today where he has to be brought deep into red to be KO'd. Like it's like there's no other way that you're gonna be able to do it. You have to get it with some knockback. There's no gimp that's gonna be able to take on Hermerson. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that happen right now. As Machete actually connects with the recovery on there, but they're doing such a great job being able to put damage on the Viper and Axo, and Hermison's still in a second stock, but Machete, if he goes that high up, that's a, that's a risk of losing a stock no matter what amount of damage that you're at. Yeah, you can take a recovery and uh, also take a stock loss very quickly up there. Yeah. Seeing Axo chasing Ooh. a little bit, Viper recovering a little bit lower. Nice little jump Coming in there. Axo going all the way to the other side of the stage. He has Ooh. the hammer, so we could see a Hermison. stomp side air knocking out Hermison. We also could see him put a, put a little bit of pressure onto Machete and just, get that kill early. Or maybe just nothing will knock out Hermison on the second stock. Machete's so close to losing this stock, and it's looking like it's going to come first, and Hermison's going to be put in the 1v2, which we've seen him win. But I guess Viper and Axo, it's a tall order. But they're both red on their final stock. Oh, man, there goes Machete. Stomp side air. Hermison, can they do it? Not a like, bad spot this, for this Hermison. Is, okay. Now it might be no, a bad definitely, spot. Definitely not a bad spot. Definitely not a bad spot. Depends Both of them are in red. A weapon. They're doing a great job of starving him so far. He didn't get the downlight. He didn't use a gravity cancel downlight, though, so his dodge is still up. But that time he did. And now his dodge is down for three seconds. Oh, no, but Hermeson gets the dive kick. He manages to get out. His axe dropped the combo. Oh, Hermeson going Hermeson. deep with this one. Now you see Viper was looking like he was in a little bit of trouble. That's when you saw Axe go air? over. Nice down air. Now Agzo severely damaged, spot. gets Saird and Hermison doing so well. Hermison is in such a great spot at this point. Agzo recovers and hits Hermison on the way back up. A lot of these late down airs from Hermison are working so well. Yes, deny that weapon, keep Hermison starved. Avoid that gravity cancel down late. Hermison without a dodge, a little bit longer in the dash jump Saird. Man, Hermison is so good at finding these little stray hits that are really powerful in the down sig. I'm, I'm waiting for it, down sig. No, it's because Axel was thinking that there was going to be a down zig. Yep. Yeah, it didn't work out. That was such a really awesome option off stage to dash jump behind his opponent without using a weapon and then pivoting the recovery to kill him off the top, knowing how damaged he yeah. was. Of all the things, of all the options to look for like right when, there. When I see Ragnar, I think, oh yeah, he's off stage. He's just going to down zig four yep. times. Or wait for him to get back onto the stage while he's down zigging. So going for that option. Um, it's a very potent kill kill option, especially right. for Katars. If you're not going to use a signature, your best bet without having to build up 10,000 damage is to go for the recovery. So the fact that he went for that sort of un unorthodox option, but still, if he can hit it, consistent kill option, mm -hmm. fantastic. I absolutely 100% agree with that. That was a great play Ooh, by Hermeson. Hermeson. Oh, just turned around like that. If he's not careful. Oh, no, and this might be going against what I said about Hermerson, which is that ugh, he doesn't lose his stocks unless he's in red, and it seems to be true, as even though he got down here three to four times, he managed to make it back, and now he's turning into a team combo on the Viper. Hermerson severely damaged, but still only onto his first stock. Viper and Axe are trying to get the same lead. Oh, that down stick actually hit Hermerson? That, that a lot of range. I didn't know that it went that far. Yeah, it goes, like, almost That's, half the stage. I thought it, like, hit where the animation ended, but it, like, goes a little bit further past yeah, that. because you have, like, the, the, the end of your actual swipe. It goes, like, probably 40% of the stage. Viper securing a lead very flashily. Uh, and, no oh, man, Hagzo, Silite, Sarah, Silite, Sarah, Orb, just um, pummeling him around with the weapon. Machete returned with the ground pound. Ooh, oh, and a and a Hermeson chasing into the sky. Is he going to go for the recovery? He's just going to go back to the platform, go deep with a ground pound. I think he's kind of lucky that Viper ended up taking that weapon, or... That could have killed. And Viper with the nares. Oh, man. Machete jumping all around, trying to follow these side airs and can't quite. 
play anything that's going to hit. Weapon toss from Viper goes high, and Axel is just keeping Machete off stage. Good for a chase touch directly downwards. And a down stick from Axel. That, that's... As people are getting more used to Thor... Oh no, that sight's a KO. That just did it in orange off the side of the stage. That's like the one place you don't want to get hit by Thor's side stick. Yep. I mean, typically just don't want to get hit by Thor's side stick in general, but uh, definitely not off stage in the direction of the blast zone. I hope y'all can't hear that in the background, but that is literally the world's loudest PlayStation in the whole world. I think that's a PlayStation. It's a PlayStation. I don't know. I don't have a console. I think it's a PlayStation. Stomp side air coming out from Agzo. Ooh, man. The down thing actually saved Viper from getting hit by a little bit more from Machete. And Machete close to losing the stock. Viper and Agzo are very comfortably in the lead. Yeah, Machete Ax looking like he's like, in look how not long a they've been on spot. the stage. And Viper and Axel very intelligently just waiting for Wall Slip to take it to place. Ooh, and oh, the, the spot side of that doesn't matter. Downsing on Thor Hammer just just busted. Yep. It, it covers so much. It's very, very good. It is extremely good. Oh, man. And now Hermerson's got the 1v2 of a lifetime. He made it happen last time, but the stocks were all even. Yeah, this looking like that might not happen here. In fact, I would bet money that it's not going to happen here. We're going to be going to a game three likely after this. Viper and Agzo are going to be tying up this set 1-1 in this loser's semifinals. Dude, Hermerson, watching Hermerson 1v2 no matter the deficit is so much fun, though. Recovery, weapon tosses, and unison for Viper and Agzo just don't work out. It's cool that they can do that because if you're close enough to your teammate, the weapon toss, its, it's, hitbox, doesn't, or it's, it's hitbox doesn't activate. If you're so close to a person. Yeah, there's a there's a quote unquote startup yeah. to when the actual hitbox starts, when so the weapon leaves your hands. They can actually be like kind of next to each other and do it and it won't hit each other. Um, but Hermerson's still living. He's making it last as long as he can. And all of this is just time for Machete to sit down, reset, consider how they're gonna play game number two. It's like uh It's an under appreciated aspect of the 1v2, which is this like and instead of giving up right away, you're trying your hardest to combat your opponents. There's the argument that maybe they're like getting a little frustrated trying to actually mm -hmm. take out the stock. And also the argument that like while the other while your your teammate is out of stocks, they have the time to sit down and just go, What do I need to do differently? Yeah. And then actually spend all of their attention, not into playing and, and watching, but just watching what their opponents are doing. So Simple had or not simple, uh, Machete had a little bit of time to adjust in that in that downtime that Hermerson also, also can, Hermerson's just like really good at 1v2s even if he doesn't win them it can interrupt the flow of momentum that's true that the 2v1 favored team because you could has. you could be like oh 2v1 is done and yeah. then it takes like an extra 60 seconds and you're like Ugh. which is an extremely long time for Brawlhalla when you games. really think about it like 60 seconds is yeah. a very long time but I don't think uh, these two teams have ever really played each other they haven't this year so far mm -hmm. and they didn't at DreamHack Winters I don't believe um, so not a lot of experience between these two in terms of just raw matchup history. Game three, and it's even so far in terms of the scoreboard. Let's see if they can keep it even on Miami Dome. Machete avoiding a lot of damage. He was the one that got KO'd super early on in game two. And that's what I was talking about. During that downtime, maybe he's making the adjustments to his play to make sure that doesn't happen again. He goes for down sig for down sig. That caught Viper on the way up. That definitely would have been a KO. But oh, the ground pound actually going for the double dip. Second hit does not connect. Stocks are all even. This is like the most, for me as a spectator, the most anxious, anxiety inducing part of a 2v2 is when everybody's equally damaged. Yes. But when Viper goes down first, it's like, okay, blue team's securing that lead. I can watch the progression of the game. Because because as, as leads are gained or lost, how they play changes depending on what they can play with. And the beginning is always really chaotic. Not necessarily yeah. with a million things going on, but just like different things happening. Because they're scrambling here for the first and over weapons, there. Yeah. And, and team combos aren't necessarily as as prevalent. Machete goes down. Hermerson is the stock tank. And he just sidles straight through both of his, his opponents. Nice scoop out of the way. Will Axel go down? No, Viper actually was really close to going down. And oh, you the team combo. <gasps> you want to talk about Hermerson needing a lot of damage on him before he finally dies? It was yeah. a down air from the edge that ended up killing him. That shows how much yeah. damage was built up on that stock. But Viper goes down, and Agzo, we were talking about the difference in, that, in, in the Viper-Agzo dynamic. Agzo now being the stock tank of the team, but Viper needs to hold on a little bit longer. He's got two stocks down in less than two minutes, and Agzo's fighting on his lonesome against Machete and Hermeson, and there goes his first stock. Yeah, unless Viper has a really gnarly last stock. Like, even if Agzo did have three stocks. Oh, no. 
100%. Going into the 1v2, even with three stocks, is not something you want to do when your opponent has four. It's three stocks to three. That makes up for it. And Agsmo and Viper might take the lead here if they're able to clean up this kill on Machete. Ooh, nice dive kick from Machete. Last second. Ooh, that dare almost hit. That would have led to the kill. Recovers low. Viper takes a little bit more damage, but you know, the second that you said Viper needs a really great last stock, he started I mean, he's doing it. He's barely taking any damage. Agso dodges all the way of that ground pound. Just barely angles the orb recovery as low as it can go. Red team's still kind of struggling to get this stock away from Machete. Ooh, that looks like he should have touched. Yeah. I think he, he it had like a 45 degree corner and he kind of rode that up, but the, the 45 degree part doesn't. Uh, yeah, the Miami Dome like corner is weird because like the graphic is out a little bit yeah. further than where there's actually wall. Um, give it that three dimensional look. But Hermison's really close to losing the stock. And Axel and Viper, despite Viper, like, Viper had the miracle stock that you're talking about. It's actually insane how long he's been on one stock, considering that, like, Axel was on three, Machete and Hermison were on two. But he's been on the same stock around Orange the entire time, and he's barely gotten hit at all. And he's returning attacks onto Machete and Hermison as they're fighting against Axel, who's still acting as a stock tank. There goes Hermison, and Viper's still alive. Axel's still on two stocks. Uh, this is such a dominant game number three from the red team, and Machete is now in the position of the 1v2 instead of Hermison. And it's not as impossible as previously, but that neutral stick sniping him from the platform uh, will do it. Amazing play coming out from Agzo and Viper. And uh, it, it's looking as though what we predicted, or what you predicted, is, is coming true. It's yes. going to a 2-1 lead, and I, I feel like a very significant change is going to have to come from Machete uh, to allow them to have a chance going on to this following game. Hermerson, we, Hermerson wasn't even being able to put in a position to to stock tank and 1v2 at that time. We might see that change. That's Thor. With the Thor pick. Uh, also stance. in the defense stance, yep. That's like the way to go. Thor's stat line is so great that you could be like, yeah, I don't need the force. My signatures are amazing. I'll just go for defense. His movement speed is like at that sweet spot. Five is like the not too much, not too little. Still enough to be able to move around. It's like uh, Goldilocks. This, this, Goldilocks. This bed's too hard. Yeah. This bed's too soft. This one's just right. Yeah, definitely. Um, typically with movement speed, you're either playing like a 7 to 8 movement speed character or you don't care. Yeah. And uh, 5 is the perfect. Unless you're, unless you're playing Queen Nai and then you just really don't care about movement speed. Yeah, yeah. That's you're a, really yeah. throwing it out. Well, sometimes you go for 4. 4 yeah. is a big, big, uh, big change over 3. Joel was playing uh, movement speed today. When he, when, when he didn't do the one defense game. I still think you, like, you might be right. That might have oh, been about a, a missing foot. Because yeah. I think he only did that that one time. It worked so well. But then he, but then he switched to Kaya and did the defense stance on there. Mm -hmm. like he was doing it with other characters. Anyway, that's a pass game. Twilight Grove, game number four. Agzo and Viper on the verge of getting the top three. Loses finals. Fight against Blue and Simple. And have a chance to meet against Boomy and Sansom. Which you said they did take a game. In which case, they even yes. did, even they did better than Blue and Simple. Yep. Because Blue and Simple weren't able to, even able to do that. Which is impressive. Uh, and re remarkable for Boomy and Sansom, to say the least. But game four is underway here. Machete and Hermeson are finding their best to get to game number five and have a chance of making the upset of the tourney. Reaching up with that recovery. He's going to go with the weapon toss. Ooh, is Viper down? Interesting. He's definitely down. Agzo didn't put himself in a position. He got killed off the top. Great job from Machete and Hermeson. A very solid start to game number four. Now, his weapon toss up is interesting there because I think that puts him more near the weapon toss so that once it's going to fall down and if the opponent dodges it, he's much closer to his opponent to find the right punish rather than throwing his weapon toss down and then hoping he can find the follow-up however many frames later, a full second, second and a half later. So that gives him closer proximity to punish his opponent. Oh, good ground pound from Machete. Viper is down to one stock again, only this time it's like... Oh my gosh, his eggs are down to one stock. His dodge is down. This is like brutal. Yeah, Viper was just kind oh of my God, wiped off the face of the earth Dude, very quickly. Stock, it's six stocks of two. Five stocks of two, whatever. Not only did the Thor swap change Machete's pace of the game, but also it's it's working in Hermeson's favor too. When it, Even in the beginning, they were separate. It wasn't even like Machete was doing that much work to kind of give relief to Hermeson. Like, they were they were very separate. Hermeson was just, like, chasing... I can't remember whether it was Axel or Viper around the island on the right side. Stomps there finally takes it, but, like, I guess Thor is just a... Like, I mean, Machete's Thor's amazing. Thor's stupid good in twos. But, but, like, Thor's a really good legend. More people need to play Thor in twos. Because, like, I'm watching Machete apply his magic to the character, which we haven't seen all day, and it's, like, looking amazing. 
And, and I know that players are recognizing it, right? Like Boomy's on Thor. Oh my god. And that, that's why I was, I was talking to Photo about that. That down signature on Aura from Thor is like built for Twilight Grove shenanigans zone. It's the perfect angle for being able to get in there. And if they're hugging the wall, the explosion from the down is going to cover everything that they could possibly do besides spot dodge. Yep. Uh, and even then, they might run out of iframes. Right, so they'll get hit by all so of your long. active frames. Because it was in that exact same spot before, too. What what on earth happened? Machete picked up Thor and looked like a looked like the god of thunder. Yep. That was incredible. And he ended up with the ground pound on the other side of the stage. He was he, I think he got like four or five KOs that match. And and, and, and Axel and Viper are just sitting there going like, huh. Did we change anything? Was it the map? That, that, that's that's the that's the hard part because this everything is on the table now. We're game number five. Yep. And loser semis. Oh, and we're in a very confusing state where it's just kind of like, where did Machete get this character from? And was it just game? Was it just that game? Are we going to make the adjustment? And it, it, it's not. You don't have as much as much room to make those decisions. So now they're just kind of like, okay, look at that. The first map banned. The first map it's banned Twilight. with Twilight Grove. And they leave open Mammoth Fortress, Great Hall, and Miami Dome. I feel like almost guaranteed the Miami Dome. Really? Yeah, just because of how small it is. But if they go to Mammoth Fortress, I'm saying Mammoth. You saying Mammoth? Oh, you're right. Look at that. I'm thinking it's because big stages. They just don't like them. But I'm not sure. I, but Mammoth isn't that big. Mammoth's pretty big. It's not that big. It's pretty big. It ain't that big. It's like the third biggest stage. Well, but out of like how many competitively chosen stages? I mean, every stage on this list has actually been competitively chosen today. Sparky has. Yep. Thunderguard Stadium, even. Oh, yeah, God, just, I don't know why anybody would pick Thunderguard Stadium. Yeah, I don't know why it happened either. It was like a Daiku Dobre thing, yep. I think. It was just, it was and, oh, they actually said it's because Daiku likes Thunderguard and Dobre doesn't care. Oh. Wow. But apparently they have no problem with Miami Dome. Yeah, Miami Dome's pretty small. I don't hate it, but I would think the, uh, the warm embrace of Mammoth Fortress. I think Machete just wants to take out stocks from Viper fast. And this was the other uh, three maps that were left. This was the one that was going to happen the fastest on it. And Viper already losing that stock. And Hermerson doing a great job of stock tanking. And it doesn't matter like what stage Hermerson's on, he doesn't tend to die early. So as he follows the Sarah, Axel has gone. It's working great for the blue team. Machete and Hermerson may have figured it out. This Thor, it's just like, why not? We just need a Thor in every team. It's going to be like uh, when Ragnar came out. It's just like there's Ragnar in every team. Now, Daiku did say, because um, we were talking about Thor earlier, and he said that those are two weapons that if you don't know how to play them, you're screwed. Oh, totally. That, like, you have to know how to play Orb well, and you have to know how to play Hammer well. And they're kind of, kind of, he said, niche weapons. So not everybody knows how to play them straight away like they do Sword. And maybe players don't want to go through that, like, learning curve that Agzo spent the time learning. And that it seems like oh, Machete spent man. the time learning as well. And Agzo proving with a double knockout, but they took a ton of damage before they were able to get those first stocks. And Agzo takes so much damage and disarm through that guitar string from Hermeson. Hermeson going for the neutral light and a recovery. The down sig, sniping him as he goes underneath the platform. Agzo down to his tournament stock against Machete and Hermeson with the Thor Ragnar combo and Viper fighting back. Does he get Machete? He does! Oh! It's that deceptive edge of Miami Dome that you were talking about. That's a huge comeback. I Machete. think Hermeson thought that Machete could get back, so he didn't yeah. try to go for the save. Because he was over there, but I think he just, like we, thought Machete was going to be able to get back. Hermeson. Almost. Dodge is gone, and Axel just takes a full advantage of that to get back to the stage. Puts a little bit more damage on the Machete. Machete is actually the most damaged character on the screen. Viper goes down. Hermeson and Machete secure the lead a little bit more, but if they can get Machete down and out, Viper and Axel can still hold on and go for that third, that top three dream. Axel not carrying, putting the damage on the Viper. He just wants to get the damage on the Machete. He knows that if he can get that stock, the 1v2 is totally doable. The neutral stick from Axel puts even more damage on the Hermeson. Machete dodges all the way of the neutral stick from Viper. He's just putting out everything that he can to put as much damage on the Machete, but it's just like, of all the legends that you want to focus down, Thor of all of them is just so difficult, and Axel's done. Hermeson brings the 1v2 on the Viper, almost guaranteed that Machete and Hermeson, with the hidden Thor pocket pick, are going to move on to losers' finals. Viper on the side of the stage avoids the down to get a little bit of the side air, but he has to weave you his way through Hermerson, take up Machete, and then have the 1v1 of a lifetime. The down to actually baits Machete into going for the side what air. What a play. What a big brain play coming out from Viper, but he's going to have to Dude, chew Viper, through Viper, three stocks. Viper is basically the king of one. There's two. one. There's one. Tosses the weapon in. Is he going to get this kill before Hermeson down light recovery. is able to respawn? Oh, There's the neutral air. Can he get the recovery on the weapon toss? Dodge out of the way. Hermeson and Machete are playing very scared, but Hermeson off. Okay. Side air. 
Goes for the ground pound. Viper manages to make it back. Viper has made these 1v2s and he makes them work in the toughest situations. And Hermeson's actually just getting hit. Down airs and nares from the axe. Don't matter, but the Nurse does and he gets it. And the pop off from Hermeson and well he knocked over the chair, the chair again. Destroyed. Why not? Hermeson and Machete are are playing out of their minds. Top three from this That's duo. That's huge. Taking that is... on Viper and Agzo, which, as Foda mentioned, reign champs of this venue. Yep. Being able to do it at DreamHack Winter are now out at fourth. Machete and Hermeson are going up against Blue and Simple to fight as I, an opportunity I to get I would the not grants. have and did not we both predict that correctly. I mean, I mean, they've been playing.